Warren William here from Smartest Data and welcome to this YouTube channel dedicated to stock investors who look to be independent in their investing in the stock markets. So do you want to have greater control over your investments in the stock markets? In this video, I will cover five key points in preparing to invest in stocks to have a deeper understanding how stock valuations work and what could be the driving the prices of your stock holdings. Let's try to level the playing field. Let's go to the video. have greater control over your stock equity investments, you need to have a roadmap to researching stocks and how stocks could be valued. Remember, anyone who has a phone or a screen, so everyone knows the price, but very few, very few know the valuations. Do you remember in the film Moneyball when Billy met Pete down the garage for the first time? Let me give it a try. Go on. Okay, people who run ball clubs, they, they think in terms of buying players. Your goal shouldn't be to buy players, your goal should be to buy wins. And in order to buy wins, you need to buy runs. People who manage equity portfolios think in terms of buying companies. This could lead them to misjudge the companies they invest in. Instead, they should be thinking of buying earnings, EPS, earnings per share or wins. And in order to buy earnings, you have to buy sales or runs, sales per share. Okay, so what am I trying to say is you have to be focused on what you're paying for in terms of the runs or sales and the wins or earnings. This means to be focused on valuations to be driven by data. Of course, the analogy is not so simple. There are other factors that come into play. Risk management, diversification, circle of competence. So of course there are differences, but also many similarities. And one of them is that that is probably an unfair game just in terms of resources. There are the rich teams, less rich teams, and there is everyone else. This does not mean you cannot compete, you can. The first thing many individual stock investors focus their time and attention on is the one aspect of stock investing for which they have no real control returns. Remember, you do not manage the company. Okay, our objective is to achieve returns, but you should also be focused on the aspects you can control or to track your investments, T-R-A-C. So what does track stand for? T is for time, understand your time horizon. R is for risk, define a risk management strategy. A is for analysis, do your analysis, then define your actions and be disciplined in investing. And then finally, C is to have control over your costs. Remember your costs also impact your returns, your data requirements, trading costs and research. So the five key points we're going to cover in this video today, first off, is to have command over the data. Then understanding valuation techniques, mispriced assets and the long game, establish your circle of competence, due diligence and research. So let's go. Okay, point one, command over the data. To be a successful investor, you must develop your skill base. You must invest in yourself. And one of the keys is having command over the absolute avalanche of data produced by the stock market on a daily basis. Look, it's a numbers game. It's not difficult, but it takes discipline. So during our lives, the investment decisions we make matter. They matter a lot, whether investment is in equities, bonds, or real estate. In making investment decisions, the information available never really produces a clear black or white result. Instead, we often have to determine what shade of grey we prefer. We have to hedge our bets. The formula for successful investing in equities is straightforward, it's R and it starts with understanding the data. Smartest data actually stands for Stock Market Analytical Ratios Technologies. Okay, now the database I use is Bar Chart. I certainly look at others, but bar chart is easy to use with a wide range of charts and screening tools. The most common charts I use are Bollinger Bands, MACD, RSI, Stochastic Analysis, and Super Trends. Point two, understanding valuation techniques. In valuing stocks, there will be unfamiliar concepts, but that's not to say equity valuations is difficult or rocket science. Valuing equities is relatively straightforward. There are three main concepts, intrinsic value, relative valuations, 
and event-driven valuation. Let's go into the intrinsic valuation first one. Typically a discounted cash flow giving the present value of future cash flows, or it could be a dividend discount model. The second one, relative valuations, is by far the most common, comparing various price ratios. So the PE ratio, price to sales, price to cash flow, and dividend yield. The multiples are then applied against the stock's history, its sector, classification, and then the major index such as the S&P 500, or even against comparable stocks, all going back over time. Keep in mind valuation models like volatility tend to be mean reversing, unless there's a good reason to break out. Okay, over recent history, this was the case for stocks like Apple, Google, and Meta. They all enjoyed good multiple expansion. Then Meta fell out of favor and was subject to a massive PE compression. The price ratios are quick and easy to calculate and easy to understand. On to the third, event driven. If a certain event happens, the stock's valuation should become X. This is quite common in resource and mining when finding new resources. Look, save yourself. Equity valuations is not a perfect science. You are not gonna get everything right. If you want to get everything right, save yourself. It's not gonna happen. Point three, mispriced assets and the long game. It is true that all the valuation techs mentioned previously assume that the stock markets are not efficient and mispriced assets. Of course, this can occur, in particular in the less research corners of the stock market, for example, in small cap stocks or minor industrial sectors. Also, keep in mind if this does happen, the stock markets can misprice stocks for a very long time. You may be right, but in the meantime, it could be painful. So you must deal with this uncertainty. Dealing with these situations is an important part of preparing yourself for successful investing. Remember, to beat the stock market, you must be ahead of the stock market. As Warren Buffett said, you have to be greedy when everyone else has fear, then you have to be fearful when everyone else is greedy. This takes a lot of practice and a lot of discipline. As independent investor, you will have convictions as to the valuation you have assigned to your investments. But these convictions should be questions. New information arises, your conviction should not be unbreakable. The stock markets do evolve, but the pace is more like test cricket, not the 100 meter sprint. Point four, establish your circle of competence. Once you have command over the data, you need to establish your circle of competence, understand where to look within your circle of competence and stay within these boundaries over time, by all means, expand these boundaries by looking at your equities to cover. In short, understand the stocks that you would like to own or why you continue to own a stock and then when it is necessary to make adjustments or sell. In some ways, investing in stocks, the second most difficult decision is when to buy a stock and it appears the most difficult decision is when to sell a stock. So why? Do investors become emotionally attached to their stock investments? Maybe. Or is it just the whole investment process is geared to give you positive investment themes? Probably. As a stock investor, you must become somewhat cynical or skeptical. Or am I just trying to say you have to think and question? So how to define what is your circle of competence and how to determine its characteristics? This comes down to how you define your skill base in coming into investing in stocks. It could be the industry that you're currently working in, could be your education, could be your interest. Are you an analytical person? Remember, at the beginning, work to your strengths and build on these strengths over time. Point five, due diligence and research. Always do your own due diligence. Do not rely on big name investors. Their investment mandate is likely to be very different from your mandate. One of the biggest considerations for big investors, they simply need liquidity. They have big cap stocks as they have a large assets under management to invest. Having access to research and data is critical. If you don't have access to research and data, you are just guessing and picking the next quick get rich story. Okay, so it, easy, it is easy to become overwhelmed when you look at the pages of data. Making the commitment to stock investing means practice. It's important to keep following the videos and it will all become a whole lot easier. But wherever you get your research, make sure it is first understandable. Do not overcomplicate things. Second, it's robust. Third, it's reliable, meaning it's independent. Always understand who is paying and writing the research. 
Being a successful investor in equities, the key is efficiently and effectively researching stocks and to constantly think and question, does it make sense? I describe investing as a three-step process. First, understand your valuations, understand where to look in the markets. You're not chasing too many rabbits. Second, in the analysis, understand the company's balance sheet, P&L and cash flow. Then the story, that's the third part, make sure it all makes sense. Most investors start with a story and then try to fit the story into the valuations, the analysis, it doesn't work. Okay, so in this video, I covered five key points you need to understand and why it's important to crunch the numbers. So why is it important to crunch the numbers? Okay, back in 2021, so last year, there were a few interesting episodes with independent investors acting on the very real probability of a short squeeze. GameStop and taking on the hedge fund's short position. Recognise there was a massive short position, probability equal to 1.3 to 1.5 times the free market flow to GameStop. And the hedge funds needed to cover. AMC, which after a very difficult 2020, opened at 2021 at around $2 per share. Then the AMC, AMC share price took off, hitting an all-time high around $72 in early June. Can these events happen again? Of course. But these opportunities are specific and they must be researched. In 2022, it has been a difficult year for stock investors. Rising interest rates, falling profits, high inflation. But always remember, the stock market looks around two years ahead. Next week's price movements are just random movements or noise. To understand these opportunities and when these opportunities arise, you have to be prepared to research individual stocks and the overall markets. You have to be an investor. You have to be in the game. Once you enter with this mindset, for sure, other similar opportunities will come apparent. So if you like these videos, like, subscribe and ring the bell. It really does help the channel. And also keep watching the quick definition videos. There's around about 150, 160 videos so far. They're short, sharp and to the point. See you in the next video.